Hey guys, this is Anime Wall Z here, and today we're going to be doing the second part of What If Deku Had a Copycat Quirk. You guys really did show some support on this what if, so we will definitely be continuing this what if. I also want to give a shout out to someone since it's an MHA what if, Young Ronin. That is YXNG Ronin. That's all I want to say for the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since a jet. When it's time, all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swear. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. In the last part, we finished off the quirk assessment test where Izuku stole first place and Momo's confidence from under her feet, however, she still got a respectable second place. Proving that even with one flaw, Kirishima isn't unbreakable. Bakugo is practically exploding with anger, tying with his manly bro Kirishima. Todoroki is starting to burn himself up in fourth place, whilst Ida's engines only raced him to fifth place. Now we can get on with this part of the what if. We'll start with the battle trial arc. We will save Midoriya's fight for last because that respect is all that a god could ask. That is a DPS reference from Daddy Fat Snaps. We will start off with Todoroki and Shoji versus Ojiro and Hagakure. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong by the way. Shoto is enraged by the fact that he is only the fifth strongest in his class and feels the need to prove himself without using his fire. He immediately runs at the building and uses Flash Freeze. He uses his cleat to choose to walk up the ice to where Shoji told him where the bomb was and tapped it before using his heat to melt through the ice. Todoroki whispers coldly, sorry but something's been getting on my nerves recently, next time I'll have a fair fight, but for now, I don't have the time to entertain you. The two opposing classmates were not sure if that was a threat, an insult or a joke. Now we have Kirishima and Sero versus Tokoyami and Suyu. Kirishima uses his ability to harden Sero and is taped to the point where it can smash through the walls of the building. Sero grabs onto the pillars on the top floor, smashing through the floors. Whilst this is happening, Kirishima dashes out of the building using his ability to climb up the wall so he can sneak up on the weapon. This plan is successful and they win. We'll ignore the other battles because they weren't actually covered in the anime, so we are finally at Midoriya and Ochako versus Bakugo and either. Deku powers up to the max to show his respect to Bakugo ago before telling Uraraka to step out. He screams out, 100% blackout, which after a little struggling knocks Ida out. He then rushes at Bakugo who will manage to keep his consciousness through sheer willpower alone. They get into a fierce explosive grapple and they start off equally matched but then Midori removes his first limiter causing him to lose a bit of ground due to pain. However, he quickly regained it. Izuku then started to squeeze Bakugo's hand. The sweat from their hands finally exploded at its peak causing a deafening sound. They run at each other and Bakugo is spiralling around in the air preparing to use the howitzer impact while Suzuku charges up an AP shot. The explosions once again collided causing another massive explosion blinding the students once more. Izuku falls to his knees but then removed another limiter forcing him to get back up. Bakugo throws a punch which is weak and flimsy and just bounces off of Izuku's chest. Bakugo says, damn it, you're actually better than me Izuku. Bakugo says this as he falls, finally acknowledging Izuku in return. Yami-san dashes behind him, catching him, telling him never to accept defeat, but Izuku also passes out, but he was caught by All Might, who had tried to stop the fight but couldn't get into the building through the locked door. Damn, young Midoriya, young Bakugo, you shouldn't hurt yourselves like this, especially after you won Midoriya. You see, Midoriya had noticed he won just before he opened the first limiter. Due to Ochako grabbing the bomb out of respect, he still kept fighting Bakugo who hadn't noticed. All Might declares the hero team's victory. The whole class had a new perspective on Bakugo and Yami-san. They went from seeing Bakugo as a hot-headed brat that would have one or two reasonable moments they came to see him as a responsible guy that just wanted to be the best. They also went from seeing Yami-san as a dark, brooding type to a guy that was quiet but still loved and respected. His classmates wanted to help them grow, he was just a bit introverted. Kirishima though was fired up after their supernova-like clash, he thought it was so cool that he could keep up with them but he still acknowledged that he had some work to do. If he he didn't want to fall behind. Izuku gets to school late again the next day and is scolded by Ozawa for constantly being late and Izuku promises to be on time next time but everyone knows it's a lie. 
Anyway, says 13 who had just entered the class, today we will be doing a lesson on rescue at the USJ. The class arrives at the USJ and are being briefed on what their task is. As this is happening, Kurigiri shows up, warping in the rest of the League of Villains. Izuku, Bakugo and Kirishima all run at Kurigiri immediately with Izuku copying one for all an explosion to cause some genuine damage to Kurigiri and some of the father villains. All of the villains are still left standing though. The class are still teleported to their own zones, but as soon as Izuku lands in the shipwreck zone, he jumps into the water and uses blackout, and Mineta uses his sticky balls to make what are essentially handcuffs for the villains. Froppy grabs the two and says, well I guess we passed the shipwreck zone. Then we cut to the ruined zone where Bakugo and Kirishima are completely dominating the villains whilst asking questions like, how do you plan on killing All Might himself if you're getting embarrassed by teenage kids? Honestly, don't insult our symbol of peace like that. Then we cut to the landslide zone, where an annoyed Todoroki is flexing his amazing ice powers on these guys. He then crosses his arms in a Nico Robin-like pose and whispers, Devil's Icy Embrace. Sprouting ice hands from the ground with grabbing and clasping abilities at his opponents. Pathetic, he claims looking over to the central plaza whilst doing something similar to skiing to get over there. Eventually, Kachan, Kirishima, Todoroki and Izuku meet up at the central plaza just in time to see Aizawa get crushed. Midoriya instantly takes off all his limiters and tries to copy the Nomu's quirk, however he can't seem to find it. His aura channels seem to have a bunch of overlapping and intertwining flows and that's when he comes to notice that Nanomu has multiple quirks. However, during the time Azuku was doing this obscured analysis, All Might has appeared and Nanomu has started to attack Azuku. However, Izuku quickly moves out of the way and All Might zooms past, picking up the other students that were there. However, Yami-san stays and copies Nomu's quirks until he lands that shock absorption and then replaces it for one for all because with all of his limiters off, there is no way he can handle the stress on his body. This means he currently has shock absorption and explosion. The fight goes the same way as in the original, however, All Might is never stabbed by the Nomu. Izuku blocks most of the Nomu's attacks with the increased shock absorption and helps All Might with the last punch. Combination attack AP SMASH! After the fight, All Might powers down with Izuku next to him, covered by the Cementos while Kurigiri and Shigaraki give up not even going for a last ditch effort. After this, they just teleport out of there. Izuku then sees All Might's injury on his respiratory system but keeps it quiet for now, thanking the heavens that he didn't let that behemoth of a creature stab him there. After the rest of the class, Izuku hummed his way home knowing that his classmates were actually really strong, good people but when he got home there was a whole Zetsu controls all of Naruto level plot twist. Izuku arrives at home but instead of his mum waiting for him at the door, there was a tall man with black hair. Izuku's eyes glint black as he starts to use his ability. Hi Izuku, I'm your uncle. John Midoriya, but you can call me Uncle John, says the man calmly as if he had no worries at all about Izuku charging up his powers. Izuku then puts down his guard and is immediately hit in the stomach by what looks like nothing. John on the other hand then full power punches through the fourth wall and looks at the camera. Time for training arc. What are you doing? Aren't you meant to be my uncle? Says Izuku rebuilding the fourth wall. Inko then comes out seeing an annoyed Izuku clutching his stomach along with her brother John. Uh, John, don't you think you should take it easy? John replies with a quick no and then catches a punch that Izuku threw. Oh, we have a promising one here. Go to bed, kid. Your training will begin after school tomorrow. Oh, and here's a radio transmitter if you're in trouble. Press the red button and I'll be there, but when it beeps, you come to me, okay? Izuku replies with, okay then. Kids these days says the 5'11 man that just beat his nephew into the ground straight after he got back from an intense fight. So that will conclude the second part of what if Deku had a copycat quirk. If you liked this part then you can like and comment what you liked about it or something that I should improve on for the next parts. If you really like this what if or basically any of the other what ifs that I do on the channel then you can subscribe and put on post notifications to be told when the next parts of the what ifs. 
will be made with great accuracy. There's just a few things that I'd like to talk about before I end the video. I just want to give more of a shout out to Young Ronin, that is YXNG Ronin. He is an explained video where he explains different aspects of MHA with his first video being explaining one for all for example. I really do believe he deserves more attention so that's why I'll be giving him a shout out at the start and end of the video. I also wanted to say that part 3 of what if Deku was a hellhound is coming out soon. It might be the next video, I'm not too sure. It's just because I had to get more in date with what I was writing about, I kind of forgot about it a lot. But part 3 will be out soon. I'm sorry about this video being short, I'll make sure not to do this again for the next videos and onward. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.